Hey everybody, welcome back to Pass More Books. I am here today to just do a quick wrap up of the books I've read this year, some of my favorites, some of my least favorites, and uh, we're just going to pass more books. So a lot of booktubers uh, set a lot of like goals for like how many books they want to read each year and like how many genres they want to read from or or you know all, all sorts of goals that they make according to like what they want to read in a year and things like that um, and I didn't do that this year <laughs> mostly because at the very beginning of this year January I had a baby and so I just knew I would be really busy I would have a lot of adjusting to do and so I just didn't set any goals and uh, the only thing I told myself was that I wanted to just enjoy the books I read and I wanted to just have fun reading and read what I want and just it didn't matter how many books I read I just wanted to have fun reading and talking about books so that's what I did and I <laughs> turns out well okay so I am reading two books currently um, and it's like mid-December almost so trying to just get this video done a little bit early before I'm busy with the holidays so I am planning to finish those two books by the end of the year pretty sure I can do it um, and I might be able to squeeze in one or two more but including those two books that I'm currently reading that I should finish by the end of the year I will have read 64 books this year let me also add here that I technically read 64 and a half books because I read like <laughs> I reread half of Jane Eyre for my book club this one month. I just didn't have time to read the whole thing, but I'd read it before, so 64 and a half. And that really, like, impressed me. Like, just as I saw my list growing throughout the year, I was, I was kind of blown away at how much I actually accomplished adjusting to having two kids and working and um, being really busy with some volunteer work. Like, it's, it's been busy, but I've managed to read 64 books and I am pretty happy about that. I've also read a lot of really fun books and that that makes me really happy too. It was really fun to look over my list and see what I've been what I've read. It's been great. Um, I also broke down my stats just a little bit and I figured out that I have read 11 novellas which is a lot for me. I don't usually gravitate towards novellas but I read a lot this year. I have read 15 standalone books as opposed to books within series. I have finished nine series this year and of all the books that I've read five of those were rereads which is also kind of a lot for me it feels like because I don't typically reread books very often um, but half of those were reading were rereading Mistborn Era 2 books for when the Lost Metal came out this fall so it kind of makes sense that I like reread three books just to catch up on that series so those are just kind of my stats for the year and now I want to talk about um, my favorite reads of the year and my least favorite reads for the year and then I'll kind of wrap it up and talk about some kind of goals that I have don't have I don't know I don't know I'm gonna start with my favorite single book and I'm also then gonna talk about my favorite series and and I'm kind of cheating because the single books that I picked can be part of a series the thing is I haven't finished the lost metal yet and so I don't know if that's my favorite book or not I think it really has the potential to be I've, I've really been enjoying it I've loved the whole series so I I think that has a potential to actually be my favorite book, but since I haven't finished it yet, I'm just going to talk instead about A Curse So Dark and Lonely by Bridget Kemmerer. I read this while I was, um, I had just had my baby, I was nursing, and I was like up for like half an hour to an hour at a time at night, and so I was just uh, downloading books on my phone through my Libby app to read and pass the time while I was nursing. And, um, it worked out really well and I read a lot of books that way <laughs> and and one of those books that I found was A Curse of Dark and Lonely and I loved it. This book is a Beauty and the Beast retelling which is my favorite fairy tale if you know me you know that <laughs> and I really loved just like the twist in the way the story was told. A lot of people will try to either stick very much to the fairy tale world and lots of magic kind of thing and other people will stick to just like setting it somehow in our world in a modern setting but Bridget really combined the two settings in this one and like had a, a girl from the normal world sucked into the beast's magical world and she had to she was just kind of stuck there and you know had to figure out am I gonna 
do I even want to try to fall in love with this guy and break his curse? Something that I really loved this, about this book was that the characters were really engaging, each one was unique, and I also loved that even though there was a lot of drama, which sometimes I don't really love with books, um, because sometimes drama just feels so calculated and fake and, and pointless, um, a lot of the drama just really felt real and like the characters really reacting to um, some difficult situations and and sometimes they weren't really being their best selves but you you recognize these flaws and still love them anyway and anyway it was just overall really really engaging and uh, the kind of romance that I just love. Okay so my favorite series that I've read this year was hard to pick because if you saw my last video, which was a review of the Aurelian Cycle, you know that I loved that series. But that's not my favorite one that I'm going to pick for the year. But I did love it, so go watch that video and find out why I loved that series. But my real favorite series that I read this year was The Renegades by Marissa Meyer. And it's like everything I could have asked for in a series, basically. Okay, so... So this is a book basically about superheroes. Um, I think really Avengers style superheroes. Basically superhero powers just kind of come to earth and it's very uh, like chaotic. Everyone's just kind of doing what they want with their superpowers and not everybody has superpowers but it becomes pretty common that like theoretically about half, maybe a little bit less than that of the population have these superpowers and it's a little bit chaotic um, and so finally these this kind of band of superheroes kind of like Avengers come up and they kind of take down the villainous superheroes and kind of start building their own like good society of superheroes who are basically now being trained to do good and police the world in, in good ways and help try to like reform the world, right? Um, and the main character, well there's two main characters, um, but the first perspective that we get into, uh, Nova, she is the niece of one of like the biggest baddest villains around and she was like raised by villains and her family died because the superheroes didn't get to them in time to like save them and so she has this whole thing against them she's planning to like undercover join the superhero training teams and from the inside out try to take them down the other main character is a boy who is like the son of like the two main biggest awesomest superheroes and he is the one who takes Nova onto his team and you know he she totally fools him and and he is well, the thing is he has this vendetta against the villain who killed his birth mom and so he's he's trying to figure out who that is and we know that that villain is probably going to be somebody close to Nova because she was raised by super villains so there's all the sorts of things that they're what's great is that Nova and Adrian these two characters they they become so close they, they develop a real friendship they might start getting a little bit closer than that it's really cute but at the same time like the reality is that they they would hate each other if they knew. Well, okay, the other thing is that Adrian has a secret that he's become an undercover superhero. He's found a way to secretly give himself more powers, and it's um, not, not like in a bad way, but um, anyway. And Nova has this thing against his alter ego, and anyway, so if they really knew their secrets, they would, they would like hate each other, but they develop this friendship and love for each other first, and, and so like the whole series you're just like you're on the edge of your seat because uh, it's it's so well done there's so many things into open to it i can't even tell you all the things anyway it's a fantastic series marissa is one of my favorite authors like if i were to make a top five authors video and talk about my top five authors she would be in that top five no question about it so it's it's a great read great writing great plot great characters like it's it's got everything so definitely one of my favorite series my favorite series that I've read this year. Okay, so now we have to talk about the worst read of the year. And I am actually pretty pleased with the fact that I, I don't feel like I was disappointed by a lot of books this year. Like, like some books were just like, yeah, I enjoyed them great and we're moving on. Um, as opposed to the books that made me really like, wow, I'm going to think about this book for a while. There were only like like no more than five books total, I would say, probably only more like two or three that I really struggled with and like didn't enjoy. The worst book that I read this year 
is Suits and Spark Plugs by Aspen Hadley. Here's the thing. So it's a romance novel and the premise is like almost kind of forgettable. There's this girl who's like dating the perfect guy and there's this like mechanic in town who she sees him as a bad boy and she's never wanted to pursue him even though she admits like every other girl in town that he's hot. And she has some family problems going on because her dad is like not really in their lives. He hasn't like technically left them but he's just like gone for months at a time without warning and then like suddenly one day he's back and acting like nothing's wrong he's like there for, for like a little bit and then he's gone again for like months and anyway so it's this really tough family situation where like he's not really supporting them he's not really there for them but he hasn't totally left them and they're just kind of clinging awkwardly to this hope that like maybe maybe dad will come back and so there's some um friction between her and her mom friction between her and her sister, friction between her and her dad, all as they're all trying to like handle the situation and um Olivia, that's her name, the main character, Livy, really, is um she's trying to keep her family together, but there's and there's really some very unhealthy codependent relationships going on in her family. So that's that's just kind of like the basics and you know, uh Livy has to figure out if she um really likes her perfect boyfriend, if she's interested in the car mechanic guy, when is she going to confront her dad about things? And then she also has her own passion about painting that she wants to get into but feels like she can't because she needs to go to nursing school so that she can be independent and like provide for herself. Anyway, I feel like it's a really good setup and from the first chapter, I actually really liked Livy's character. She has a very scientific mindset where she likes rules and theories and, and statistics and she likes things to make sense kind of thing. So so there was a lot about the premise that was interesting as, as I got in there, um, but there was just so much as the book unfolded that left me unsatisfied. Like the character relationships just didn't go where they were promised to go. Like for instance, uh, Livy's little sister, she complains multiple times that no one has ever taught her how to cook. And like, oh, maybe I would help make dinner, but like no one's ever taught me. And the thing is she doesn't come across as a brat when she's saying it, even though she's supposed to. And Livy just blatantly ignores her and just goes about cooking dinner. Which like, <laughs> I get that she's supposed to think that her sister is being bratty about it, but doesn't come across that way and I'm like oh great there's gonna be a good scene where Livy finally sees her sister and sees what she's trying to say and see the pain she's feeling and she's going to like bring her in and she's gonna be like here here sis and I can't remember her sister's name but she's gonna bring her in and be like hey come come make dinner with me I'll, I'll teach you how we'll do it together and they're gonna have this great moment where they connect over Livy teaching her sister these important life skills and they're gonna have fun and they're gonna make a good dinner and it's gonna be like a great thing to help heal their broken relationship. And that never happened. They never made dinner together. They She never said, I will teach you. Well, maybe she, she might've said that she was gonna teach her sister how to cook, but she never did it. Like, that was like the easiest promise to fulfill and I mean they had some other moments where they grew closer and, and started to heal their thing their problems but like you just left so much work undone anyway there were so many things like that where like characters just their motivations didn't make sense or just anyway and so just as the book got on and on and on um also, okay, so there came a point where like Livy and her main guy like are officially together. They like, they're they're happy. They're dating, and then th things got so boring for the longest time. And and then there was this most ridiculous dramatic conflict that like didn't even make sense. And then of course they all just end up happily ever after. And it just, uh, it, it just went so downhill. Like. It was, it had so much potential and it just was so unsatisfying. Can I also just say that I feel like almost every protagonist I read in a romance novel, the female lead, almost every single one has this obsession with painting. And like, I don't know why that's just such a common thing in romance novels, at least contemporary romance. I just, I don't know, I feel like I see that all the time. That's not like a dig on this book in particular. I just see that a lot lately and I feel like I want female leads who do something different than paint, please. Anyway, it doesn't matter, it's fine. Okay, let's move on from all that 
the ranting. Anyway, um, I'm really excited for next year to keep reading. I, I don't want to put a number again on how many books I read because I just feel like I've, I've got a lot on my plate, a lot of things to balance, and I'm really trying to make sure that those things don't overtake my motherhood responsibilities and, and my kids because they're the most important thing to me. So I just don't want to put a number on it, and I feel like also if I put a number on it, that would just stress me out because I'd constantly be thinking like, need to read another book and get the number and just, I know, so I don't think that's the right goal for me to set but um, I do want to have some sort of goal in mind and it's not super specific. Basically the thing that I've surprised myself with this year is that I've gotten quite a few physical books and then I just haven't been as good about picking them up and reading them as I thought I would be. So like just on my bookshelf right here like Jonathan Strange Mr. Norrell Gilded, something else. Um, oh, I have this book. There's a book. Oh, that one. Like, there's multiple books on my shelves that I got within this past year, and I still haven't read them. Oh, also those two. So, granted, I do have a hard time sometimes making time to read actual physical books because, um, like I said, things are busy. I've got kids who like to crawl all over me. Sometimes reading a physical book around them is just not safe for the book. <laughs> so I usually only really get time to pull out my books at night and sometimes I'm catching up on work at night or I have a mountain of dishes to do or you know it's just things are crazy. But I do just want to be a little bit more conscious of making time to read my physical books because I just don't want them to sadly sit on my shelf and not get read. <laughs> so um, I just want to be a little bit more conscious of trying to like really work through that aspect of my TBR list and get through those books because I really am excited about the books I have on my bookshelf. Um, so yeah, that's that's really, I know it's not much of a goal. It's probably, you're probably like, whatever, Brittany. But that that's just the focus that I want to have. I'm still totally going to enjoy my ebooks and my audiobooks, but I just want to make sure that I am making some good time for my physical books. Yeah, that's that, and I hope you all um, I've had a good year of reading too. You can tell me if you have been keeping track how many books you've read. It's probably easier to remember maybe your favorite books that you've read or your least favorite books. I would love to hear what you've been reading and if you have any goals for reading next year, um, let me know. And let's pass more books. Bye!